Hello my lovelies and welcome back to a kooky corner of YouTube where today we are looking at finishing up our journal wrap. Um, I think I left you the last time finishing up stitching into your squares where you wanted to. Uh, I thought I'd just show you the full uh, show of this one. Let me move these box of threads out of the way <clears throat> so that you can see. So this is going to be where my overlap goes and that's going to be shown on the front of my journal so I've put quite a few decorative items on the front literally because that's going to be the bit that you see when you hold it the right way around um, but I've got some of these little um, applique stars that's felt just cut into star shape applique on with a little bead attachment I've got a spiral going around here let me come down a little bit so you can see a spiral there with some star sequins going around that and we have got um, heart pico buttons we've got another one of the pieces from the bazaar pack down here in the corner i've got a couple more buttons and a bead up on this top section i've got four beads in a row i've got a little piece of my favorite glittery fabric going on down there and I've stitched some um, little embroidered stars into that part there. This part I showed you before, it's got like a seed stitching, random seed stitching down there. In this one, which is kind of like an unusual, it looks like it's raised, but it isn't fabric. I've just gone down with running stitches in a gold thread. Um, added a piece of sequin ribbon on that side and a row of sequins going down at the bottom there. So let me take you back up again. There we go. La. I hope you can see that now. Let me take you a little further up. I'm sorry about my hand in the way of the camera there. Right, okay. So I've got it. You probably have noticed the clips going all the way around the edge, and that is because I've fitted on the inner. Okay, so the bit that we did first, which was to um, do our inner part, has now been clipped to the backing. And what we're going to do is attach it. Now, I'm not going to attach this side for now because I want to decide. Um, where my ribbon closure is going to go or whatever it is I decide to do as a closure on this. Um, let's look back. So this one may have some more of this I could use or I might find something else but this is like a sari ribbon silky closure thing. I've got a fair amount of that to wrap around it and that's what you're looking for just something enough to wrap around and I'll probably on the end of this one, I'm going to stick some beads. Need to finish that one off. On this one, this was a serendipitous find, which was a shoelace. <laughs> a very long shoelace, and it hadn't been used before. But it's just kind of sewn in there and then wrapped around like so. And it's got some beads on the end just to finish it off. So we just have to get our middle stitched in so our inner gets stitched on i'm going to start where's my beginning bit there okay i'm going to start from the top of there so i'll start from there and go around three sides in fact you could you could start midway down and leave yourself a little gap which is probably what i'm going to do actually i'll start from there and go around but remembering to leave myself a gap and what i'm going to do is leave two clips in where the the gap is going to be just to remind myself and um yeah and that's just going to be a simple over sew stitch it's not anything that shows through anywhere so what you want to do is to grab yourself um maybe a thread that's not going to be so obvious and i'm just going to go and grab mine now and i'll show you what i mean okay so the thread that i've chosen is one recommended by um kate from the last homely house it's included in her a uh, selection of Aurafil slow stitching threads that she has in her shop, which I actually bought because I thought they were all glorious colours and I liked them a lot. Anyway, this one is, um, it's not the, the thicker thread. This one is the Aurafil 50, I think it is. I'm sure it's a 50. Yes. 
and it's a very very light gray and Kate said she uses it in all her quilts because it's one that blends in with everything and doesn't kind of show itself off too much now if you wanted to you could make this um you could make it a, a noticeable thread like I did on this one you could actually go that way if you wanted to but for this one I decided I wanted it to be kind of like sinking into the background uh this one is a 2600 i think it is if i can read that correctly and that's the aurafil 50 and it's thinner but nice and strong a nice quilting thread and good for hand sewing as well and i've started a little bit and if you can even see it and that's what i mean it kind of blends in there to kind of just not something that you would notice unless you're actually looking so i'm doing a really really small stitch with this i'm not going all the way through to the front i'm literally just going through a little of the backing there and then it's like an over sew stitch and just coming out hope you can see this it's kind of just taking in a little bit of the inner and then a little bit of the outer now you can do it really neatly and slowly if you want to just so that you can get a nice finish on this but it's just such a nice thread to use where you don't want it to show too much that one went a bit astray Let's see if i can rescue that Let's pull that one out it just went a little bit weird i think it's because i'm holding it at an angled stitch on the camera um, so I'll rectify that one. But yes, I'm going to go all the way around, apart from the two places there where I've marked, which is going to be the front of my wrap, where the bit goes in to um, attach it. So if you'd like to follow suit, grab your thread and your inner. And what I've done is clipped it around. I've been very sure because I kind of because it distorts itself slightly when you do the running stitch you've got to kind of pull it a little bit just to get it into shape but it's worked really well really happy with how it came out and now i am going to stitch it in place this this step this this inner lining part of it you don't have to do um obviously you could just put a plain piece of fabric in here as backing or you could put a piece of felt in here as a backing i'm just doing this because i really like the process and i like the, st <laughs> the start of this where i just sit go up and down in rows but again it's something that is purely your own choice so if you've got a really nice backing fabric and you don't really want to add anything into it and you and you want to make this a quicker make um, then by all means <laughs> forego the first part of the part one of the video which is making this inner but that said once you get it and you feel the real nice thick I don't know it's just got a really nice feel to it and I'm quite I like I like feeling my fabrics I, I'm a fabric feeler I'm just outing myself right here and now um, I do like uh, touching fabrics which is why on the front of here I've got all kinds of different um, different kinds of fabrics so I've got some corduroy there I've got some silk there I've got the scratchy bit of the glittery fabric there it, it's just really tactile and and I also wanted that for my inner and it may be me just being a bit extra but that's how I like it <laughs> but I'm just saying for you if you don't want to do that very first part and you just want to line it with something you just have to literally turn over the edges and just just line it but if you want to be extra like me and do the stitching you know <laughs> anyway we are where we are with mine and I am going to um, as I said stitch around the edges and then I'll come back to you and we'll choose how uh, what we're going to put in the fastening part of this see you soon okay i know i said that a lot don't i i need to stop saying okay okay <laughs> um so i have got my inner um now firmly stitched in i'm just picking all these little bits off my piece um so it's almost finished it's almost finished apart from the tie fastening so this is the time i need to be trying it again around my book which i buried <laughs> under a debris of other things 
Uh, I'm going to leave those two clips in because it reminds me where I need to put my fastening. So, hopefully, we pull this around, we put it around like so, and it do a perfect meet. Yes. So we've got a nice little edge here, like so. That's just perfectly fitted to my book. Hurrah! Now all I need to do is to put my um, my fastening piece into this middle bit here. And then it will be done. So to choose what I'm going to put in the middle, that's the bit next. Um, so I'm going to grab a few things out and then um, make a decision on how that is going to be fastened let me just show you the finish on this with that gray thread this orophil one um it's really really good it's actually blended really well into the background and because i've got this um blanket stitch on the first bit that i did I, yeah i did finish it off with a blanket stitch i kind of just went around it with the blanket stitch you don't have to you can if you want to i didn't on this one because it's kind of chunky um and i didn't on this one either um no i didn't do any blanket stitch on that one i just fancied doing it on this one so i did um so this one's got a blanket stitch on the first on the front part which is why i didn't really want to do a an extra stitch on the back that showed so that was perfect worked really well okay i'll go and grab some ideas for fastenings i'll be back in a tick so my two choices of fastenings, I've got these yarns um, that I have in my stash of yarns. I've got so many yarns. <laughs> um, yeah, I do crochet and knitting as well, so I do have a lot of stuff. Um, but this is kind of, it's really cool actually. It's like a, a felted wool, but it's got like a stitch running at the centre of it. I can't even remember where I got it from. It's not even got a ball band on it. So I, I'm not sure where I got it from, uh, but I love it. I tend to buy things that I like and <laughs> just hold on to them until the moment occurs. And usually a moment does occur, so that's all very well and good. So I've got that, and I have got the same thread that I used for this one, which is this Lorexy yarn come ribbony do. <laughs> And I'm thinking that I'm going to combine the two together somehow. So I've, I've cut off some pieces. Might have clipped them together. Yeah, I do. Um, I've cut off more than I think I'm going to need because um, I might double this up even. It may be a way that I do it as a double. So I'm trying to off camera just try and gather these together so those ends are now a match let's put them to there and I want it to be fairly long and I want it to be durable so I'm thinking that because it's not a it's kind of really tassely it's got some strength to it and I think this will work pretty well so I'm going to go with that. That's my idea for my inner. So what I'm going to do, try and find the center of my journal. And I'm going to clip this in place. I hope you can see what I'm doing there. Just kind of realized I might not be on camera line. Hopefully that is halfway through. Let me fold it. Yeah, pretty good. That will do fine. And what I'm going to do now, is because I left a gap there, I now have to sew up the gap and I'm going to use this nice strong um, Aurifil thread again to do that little snippet of bits there to finish it up and to try and hold those in place. And that will hold that nicely. And then the only thing I've got to do is to decide what I'm going to dangle on the ends. Um, <laughs> so that's that's the next bit. But first of all, stitching that gap together. 
Okay, so here we are, and this is my finished wrap. So you can see I've sewn in my um, my tie around, and on the end of my tie around, I've uh, slotted some of these wooden beads, which I really quite like, and they also give it a nice. I don't know if you're anything like me. I quite like the tactileness of when I'm drawing, maybe having something to fiddle around with. <laughs> so that su that suits me down to the ground, just having some extra dangly bits. Obviously, you can add in whatever you like. I did consider putting in this beautiful little bird, but I couldn't figure out how I was going to keep him there. Um, like I might even just stitch him on at some point. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> so I do like him a lot. But yeah, this is it. All completed. Um, wrapped around my book so you can see this is the back of it now so i was kind of considering where the tie would go around when i was putting my um embellishments on so that nothing would get really in its way and that's something you want to consider a little bit of as well so let me just take this out of here so just it wraps around a few times a couple of times as many times as you want it to really it's your it's your journal cover and so you can do whatever the heck you like with yours uh, but this one as i say wraps around a few times and that tucks underneath and that will hold it all together and dangle down nicely like so so i hope you have enjoyed this three-part um journal uh, stitch along with me <laughs> uh, if you have enjoyed it please put me some comments down below um, if there's any other things you want clearing up about you're not sure that I've done a certain process or whatever it is um, don't don't worry just just ask me the question I'll be happy happy to help if I can uh, to solve any issues that you might have or any problems that you have with certain bits or or anything like that so yes please do send me some comments i'd love to see any of your journal wraps when you finish them if you want to share them uh, i am on instagram with the same names cool kooky creatures so if you look for me on instagram you can share and tag me in so that i can come have a look and see how uh, see what you did with it and how wonderful everybody interprets this in a different way it doesn't matter if you give them everybody the same materials everybody will interpret it in their own way and that's what I love about this whole process. You can have fun with your sewing. You can have fun with putting colours together. It's something that, you know, it's really intrinsic to you as a person and, and things that you want to add in and symbols you want to add in, anything like that. You know, me, obviously, you can see I'm a magpie womble by the amount of things that I add in. So this, this journal cover kind of tells you something about me. And everybody's different. Everybody likes different things. Somebody may interpret this with the traditional like blues and creams. And I'd love to see something like that. Um, so if you do something like that, don't forget, tag me in. I, I love to see what you do with these. Um, so please, please do. If, if you have Instagram and you're feeling of a mind, you'd like to share it. Um, other than that, hope you've had a really good day. Hope you've enjoyed putting together your journal. And if you haven't quite put it together yet, hope you enjoy the process. <laughs> Again, leave me comments. If you like what I'm doing, um, give me a thumbs. Show me a thumbs. Show me a thumbs. If you are magpie wombles like me, mention your magpie womble down in the description and down in the description, down in the comments section. Um, I love magpie wombles. They are my tribe. So if you are a magpie womble also, let me know. <laughs> so yeah, comments subscriptions if you are at all interested in anything that i do here and you'd like to see more different things that i do i am uh, an eclectic maker so i do a lot of things uh, so pop back it could be something completely different i do art i like to look at art materials i like to look at sewing materials i'm a textile artist at, at my core i would say but i i like to make i like to draw so subscribe if you enjoy what i'm doing um have a great day i will see you very soon with something else bye for now